every year, the year before, um, is a motivation. No matter, unless you won a national championship, there's there's always things from the year past that you're trying to improve on. And certainly, I think uh, you know the way we went through the regular season and then how we played in the postseason um, uh, is something that I think we've we've really challenged our guys, and I think they really understand that. It wasn't just losing to Santa Barbara. We just didn't play well in any of the three games in, in the um, Big West tournament. We didn't play well in the NIT game against Washington State. And so, you know, I, I think these guys, a lot of veterans, uh, have been through a lot of different parts of, of seasons, good and bad, and, and uh, experience isn't just about the positives uh, that, that you go through, but the negatives. And we've had a lot of both here in the last three or four years, and hopefully we can put it all together this season. Well, I like talking about them as a group because that's really, in my mind, they are they're our first recruiting class and uh, have really uh, changed the dynamics and, and uh, just changed Long Beach State uh, basketball, the program, here in, in a short period of time. And, and each one of them has had an integral part of it. And so, you know, it's hard to, to differentiate them, but I think... Uh, Last year, Casper kind of emerged as the as the leader of that group, which a point guard should. And uh, uh, you know, you can point guards are something like uh, looking at, at horses in a horse race, or or you know, picking out a wife. Everybody's got a different opinion of, of what they like or what what attracts them to them. But as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't trade Casper Ware for any point guard in the country. I just think for what he does for our program and and what he means, he's gonna. Uh, all these guys are going to rewrite the record books at Long Beach State and, and somewhat in the Big West. And so, you know, um, Casper has led us uh, to every year getting better. As he's gotten better, the team's gotten better. As he's gotten more vocal, our communication's gotten better. And, uh, you know, he's going to go down for me as, as one of the, my favorite players I've ever coached because he's been so coachable and has he's done that, the team has. Larry Anderson has just uh, been so versatile, and again, he is going to rewrite some record books just in his versatility. He's in the top ten in almost every statistical category at the school. He's, he's had to play out of position some, had to play some point guard, uh, all these type of things. But you know, he's a two, two-time All Big West uh, player out of three years, uh, with one year uh, with a lot of injuries, and, and uh, uh, he means so much because he was kind of the first. Uh, guy, high profile guy who said, okay, coming back to Long Beach, coming back home after he left. Casper had never left here, but he went to prep school and came back and said, it's okay to, to, to stay in Long Beach. And uh, so he has just meant a tremendous amount to us. TJ Robinson is, uh, you know, very understated. Uh, again, uh, an all league player that uh, is going to rewrite every, every rebounding record. He's on pace to, you know, in the Big West and in, the, in, in, our, in our school. And so, um, I just think that, that TJ is very efficient, uh, he's different than the other guys, he's quieter, he's more unassuming, uh, but uh, you know, again, somebody who came here when we were, had won six games and said, you know what, I'm going to go there and make a mark, and he has done that. And, and uh, Gene Phelps is probably the uh, most understated of them all, uh, uh, because you know, plays the same position kind of as TJ, and, and that we've kind of played them together. But, uh, Gene has always been the, the, the guy that uh, has taken a back seat to the other three, and really uh, there's been no need for that. You always hope as a coach uh, going in, you always think you're going to be deeper than the years past, and then all of a sudden as a coach you get in the middle of a game and, and you're only playing six, seven guys, which we did most of last season. But I do feel like um, uh, the best thing right now is as these seniors are going to be seniors and graduate, I do feel like the program itself is in a pretty good position uh, with some of these new guys. I think uh, Mike Caffey is certainly a, a point guard uh, who is in the same stature as Casper was as a freshman. Now, if he can develop as ca like Casper did, we'll really feel good. But we feel like uh, you know he is a point guard of our future and gives us depth there. Which you know at, at the end of these, uh, the last two seasons, Casper's fatigue has has really been a detriment to our, our, our season. And we're, we think that uh, uh, Mike is going to help us in that regard. We think James Annis is a very good player uh, uh, who is versatile. He can play the one, the two, the three. 
uh, and he's about 6'8". He's taller than both of our inside players uh, and, and has, gives us great length and, and versatility. Uh, and again, can play a lot of uh, positions. And then I think, you know, uh, uh, we've got some other guys. Uh, uh, we're really happy with Peter uh, Papa George, who's come in uh, and gives us another shooter. Uh, and uh, then after that, I think you got you got to look at some other seniors. You got to look at uh, Corey Jackson. You got to look at um, Edis Diversovic, and 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 hopefully that they'll, they'll step up. And, and I'm sorry, and uh, uh, Sean Starkey. So you know you have seven seniors, and seniors are are here uh, to, to give us that experience and to help play. You do that because for me, my philosophy uh, here is that uh, the preseason is truly a preseason. It is to get yourself ready for the season, which is the Big West season. And uh, I, I just think that it's really hard for players or, or teams to really know how good they are unless they play good teams. And I also think that if we're ever going to to move out of the mid-major level, if we're ever going to get nationally recognized, we have to play national teams and we have to put ourselves on a big stage to be able to perform and, and to, uh, to have an opportunity to see where we stack up there. And then, you know, if it doesn't work out well, uh, as in the last few years where, you know, uh, we've played competitively but haven't won those games, uh, you have the, the Big West season to, to kind of redeem yourself and, and keep improving to where you play those teams on a neutral court in March. And that's always been our goal. We haven't done that yet because we haven't really made March besides the quick NIT exit last year. So, you know, uh, but it is, that is a goal of ours. It is, you know, kind of our intent on the scheduling. And I do, I do think our players like to play in those big games. Uh, it's fun to coach in those games. And, and again, it just kind of gives you something to point to. And, 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 and the biggest thing for this team, though, as I've challenged them, is playing in those games isn't going to be fun this year. We need to win those games. We've played in them. We understand what it is to compete in those games. Uh, this team needs to step up and win and have some success in those games. If they can't handle that pressure, then it's not going to work anyway. <laughs> I mean, they, I mean, they, they, they uh, have the experience to handle that pressure. They have the, the challenge. I think, I think today, uh, the one thing that's changed on basketball players is just how overconfident a lot of them are. You know, uh, I think kids have a false sense of they can do anything. And, uh, you know, that's something that I, I keep trying to preach to them. You know, I, I just have a different philosophy on pressure. I, th I think, uh, Pressure's fun. It's it's what makes college basketball what it is. You know, it's not a best of seven. It's a you're one and done in, in March, and the teams that can handle that continue on, and the teams that can't don't. And, and we need to be a team that, that, that thrives on pressure and and thrives on that. And uh, you know, I don't back down on the fact that this will not be a, a successful season in in anybody in our program's mind if we don't go to the NCAA tournament. And uh, so, you know, if that's pressure, so be it. That's reality. That's who our expectations of who we are. And I think if you expect that as a person, it's really not pressure. It's just uh, uh, living up to who you want to be and, and doing the things that you need to do to, to be successful in your life. It just makes me proud. It almost gets me uh, sentimental because I think of Casper when he was at GAR where we're running over there, it seemed like every week to the counselor's office trying to see if he's going to even be able to go to college, you know, and, you know, the, the little guy that just uh, didn't take school serious, didn't just thought that, you know, uh, playing in a pickup game was more important than, than doing his English papers, you know, and, uh, and to see where he's at now as a person uh, makes me more proud than as a player, and everybody can see how he's developed as a player. I mean, uh, I mean, I said the other day that he was a center when I went and watched him in high school. I mean, he was guarding the Ware Twins at Modern Day one game uh, because he was the third or fourth tallest guy in the starting lineup, you know. Uh, and uh, yet, uh, as a person, you know, he's on target to graduate. He's, he can look a person in the eye and talk to them and shake their hand and, and, and lead a team. You know, his first year on the court, he was just so painfully shy. He would do what he's supposed to do, but a point guard has to worry about the other four people. And now he's running a club. He's he's a captain 
uh, running uh, not just the you know, five guys on the court, but but making sure everybody is on the same page on and off the court. And I'm just really proud. It's why you get into coaching, you, certainly, you know, for what he's accomplished on the court, but also just to see the change in in, in him as a human being. And I just think his upside uh, is going to continue, you know, and I, I, I think, uh, again, if he gets the right fit, I don't see any reason as he continues to develop why he can't play at the next level uh, and, um, and uh, make somebody's roster uh, and make a, another coach at the NBA level very happy. But again, he's got to continue to, to keep t making the strides that he is. I think it's, I think it's good. You know, my biggest concern for three years has been everybody. It's not like we woke up and we said, okay, we've got four starters that are going to graduate in, in um, 2012. I mean, that's been. Uh, but the first year or two, it was kind of hard to get players behind them because they were going to be behind them. So this was a real critical last year and a half, and I really feel good about uh, where the program is as far as the, the depth and, and we have, you know, we're going to have four or five kids sitting out this year waiting for their opportunities next year. And, and again, I think the mark of a program is when you don't have to rebuild, but you can kind of reload. And I do feel like we have an opportunity, whether we can do that or not next year, I don't know. But I think we have an opportunity to reload and, and compete for a, a, a championship uh, in the following year also. So, uh, you know, I, I think the program is, is heading in the right direction. Uh, it's certainly not where I want it to be. Um, I think any coach, uh, you know, winning a league championship is great, but, but uh, you know, getting your program and elevating it to another level to where you not only win a league but, but can compete nationally, uh, I think is our goal and, and most coaches' goals. And until and we, till we reach that, I don't think I'll be very happy.